These are my most requested recipes for Thanksgiving. I'll share six different pie recipes with you, three different types of crust, and homemade whipped cream topping. So let's get started. In under seven minutes, I'll show you how to make my favorite southern sweet potato pie. This recipe has an all-butter pie crust, rich and smooth sweet potato filling, and a quick and easy homemade whipped cream topping. We'll start with the crust. In a mixing bowl, stir together one and a quarter cups all-purpose flour and a half teaspoon salt. Next, add one stick of cubed unsalted butter, and there's no need to soften the butter. You'll get a flakier crust if the butter is cold. Toss together with a large blending fork, and I like to cut the butter into the flour until it resembles pea-sized crumbles. Drizzle in a quarter cup of buttermilk a little bit at a time, and quickly mix together until it forms a ragged dough. You can finish mixing by gently pressing together with your hands. For a tender pie crust, try not to overmix the dough. Wrap in plastic wrap, press into a disc, and chill for at least 30 minutes or overnight. You can see in this picture little pockets of butter and marbling, and that's what creates a tender, flaky pie crust. You'll want to remove the dough from the refrigerator for about 10 minutes before rolling. On a floured surface, roll the dough slightly larger than a standard 9-inch pie plate. And I love this pastry board. It's the perfect size for rolling pie crust. Just roll into a circle all the way to the edge of the board. I'll have links in the description for some of the things I'm using today. Roll the dough from the inside out towards the edges. And to make sure your dough doesn't stick to the board, just sprinkle a little extra flour underneath. If you see a little place where your dough is starting to crack, just press together and keep rolling. Double check to make sure the crust is larger than your pie plate. And then gently transfer the dough and adjust to center it the best that you can. If the dough accidentally tears, it's not a problem. Just press it together. Fold under the extra dough, forming a nice edge all around the pie. And you can flute the edges by pinching and twisting, or you can make a design by pressing a fork around the edge. It's a good idea to chill the crust for a few minutes while you mix the filling. This helps the edges hold their shape and prevents the crust from slipping down in the pan as it bakes. And next we'll make the filling. Separate two large eggs. In a small mixing bowl, beat two egg whites until soft peaks form and set aside. In another mixing bowl, cream together one stick of softened unsalted butter and one cup of packed brown sugar. Next, add two cups of sweet potato puree. Roasted sweet potatoes work best for this recipe. Add the two egg yolks from earlier, one teaspoon cinnamon, one half teaspoon ginger, one half teaspoon salt, two teaspoons vanilla, and one half cup buttermilk. If you don't have buttermilk, you could use whole milk, half and half, or evaporated milk, but I really like the extra flavor the buttermilk adds. And the final step for the filling, fold in the two beaten egg whites. Even when I was little, I loved homegrown sweet potatoes. I think I'm about five years old in this picture.
pour into a 9 inch unbaked pie shell and bake in a preheated 350 degree oven for about an hour and 15 minutes to an hour and 25 minutes, depending on your oven. Smooth out the filling with a spatula and make a little swirl design on top. And jiggle and tap a couple of times to even out the filling. As the pie bakes, you may need to add a foil pie crust shield at some point during baking, and this can help prevent overbrowning around the edge. I like baking in a glass pie plate to keep up with the browning on the bottom of the pie crust. If it's not browning enough on the bottom, just move it to one of the lower racks for a little while. While the pie is cooling, you can make some homemade whipped cream topping. In a mixing bowl, beat one and a half cups of heavy whipping cream until it just starts to thicken. Add two tablespoons of instant white chocolate pudding mix and one half teaspoon vanilla. Continue beating until nice and thick. You can use it right away or chill for later. I really love this topping. It's not too sweet and pairs perfectly with the filling. I really hope you'll try this recipe. How to make the world's best cranberry pecan pie. Tart cranberries and orange zest help to balance out the sweetness of a traditional pecan pie. For the filling, whisk together one cup of granulated sugar and three large eggs. Stir in one cup of corn syrup, or you could use the same amount of honey. Add a quarter teaspoon salt, one cup of chopped pecans, four tablespoons of melted butter, and the zest of one orange. Whisk together and make sure everything is blended well. And the last ingredient, stir in one cup of fresh cranberries. You can use frozen cranberries if you need to, but I've had the best results using fresh. Pour the filling into a standard sized unbaked pie shell. I'll leave a link in the description for two of my favorite pie crust recipes. I like to decorate the top with a few extra pecans. Make sure to coat the pecans with a little bit of the filling to give them a nice shine as the pie bakes. And I think it needs a cranberry right in the very middle. Bake in a preheated 325 degree oven for around an hour and 20 minutes. It seems like a long time, but just keep check on the browning. All ovens are different. Baking times can vary between an hour and 10 minutes to an hour and a half. You'll know the pie is done when the filling puffs and it just begins to crack. It's best to let the pie cool completely before serving. Honey pumpkin pie is my new favorite fall recipe. The texture is just right and I think you're gonna love it. For the filling, we'll start with one half cup packed brown sugar, two heaping tablespoons of flour, one half teaspoon salt, and two and a half teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. If you'd like to know how to make your own blend of pumpkin pie spice, I'll include a recipe at the end of the video. Stir together the dry ingredients and then add 15 ounces of pumpkin puree. You can roast and puree your own little sugar pumpkins 
or feel free to use canned pumpkin. Next, add one half cup of honey. I really love the rich, dark flavor of organic raw honey, but any honey you have on hand would work well for this recipe. Whisk together well. Make sure everything is combined before we add the next couple of ingredients. Next, we'll add two whole eggs and one extra egg yolk. Lightly beat the eggs before you add them to the filling. The extra egg yolk will add a silky texture to the pie. If you love baking, this is a good time to subscribe to my channel. Also, I'm taking recipe requests. If there's a special recipe you're looking for, just let me know in the comments below. I'll leave links in the description for all the pies you see here. And for the last ingredient, one 12 ounce can of evaporated milk. Stir together well until everything is combined. I'm filming pumpkin bread next and also pumpkin pie bars to add to my fall baking playlist. Once everything is all mixed together, pour into a standard sized unbaked pie shell. If you're looking for a good pie crust recipe, I have two listed below. An old fashioned pie crust recipe using shortening and the second one, an all butter pie crust made with buttermilk. Tap the pie plate a couple of times to release any bubbles inside the filling. Bake in a preheated 425 degree oven for 15 minutes then reduce to 350 and bake an additional hour. You may need to add a foil pie crust shield around the crust halfway through baking to prevent over browning. All ovens are different, so baking times can vary. Insert a sharp knife in the middle of the pie to check to see if it's done. If it comes out clean, it's all finished baking. Allow the pie to cool completely before serving. I'll also include a link to my favorite homemade whipped topping. This recipe makes a really pretty slice. It's glossy and sharp on the edges and has the perfect silky texture. Top with a big dollop of whipped cream and a little extra pumpkin pie spice. I think I'll go ahead and try a bite right now. If you try my recipe, please let me know what you think in the comments below. Check out the nice golden bottom crust. And this is my blend for pumpkin pie spice.
you want to try something different and a little bit extra special, try this recipe for honey pecan pie. We'll start with an unbaked pie shell and a standard 9 inch pie plate. If you need a good pie crust recipe, you can watch the first part of my world's best pumpkin pie video. For the honey pecan filling, we'll start with one cup of granulated sugar. Add three large eggs and mix well using a whisk. Stir in a half cup of honey, and I really love the rich flavor of Nature Nate's organic honey. Add a half cup of light corn syrup. Make sure to use the light and not the dark because the dark tastes a little like molasses and you want the true honey flavor to shine through. So make sure to use light corn syrup. Next, add a quarter teaspoon salt, one half teaspoon vanilla and mix together well. Stir in two tablespoons of melted unsalted butter. Add one cup of chopped pecans. You can switch over to a large spoon or a spatula and fold in the chopped pecans. Pour into an unbaked pie shell and bake in a preheated 325 degree oven. Depending on your oven, you'll need to bake it for at least an hour. Mine baked for about an hour and 15 minutes. As the pie bakes, you'll notice the filling begins to puff and crack on the top. And that's what you're looking for. I would say bake it a little longer than an hour, probably closer to an hour and 15 minutes. But again, it really just depends on your oven. For a printable recipe, visit my website at doublestopbakeshop.com. How to make the world's best pumpkin pie. In the next eight minutes, I'll show you how to make this pie from start to finish. From tender flaky pie crust to luscious pumpkin filling, all topped with spiced whipped cream. We'll start with the crust. In a mixing bowl, add two cups of all-purpose flour and one teaspoon salt. Blend together using a large fork. Add three quarters cup shortening. I like to cut the shortening into the flour using a large blending fork. Keep working the shortening into the flour until you have little pea-sized crumbles. Add seven and a half tablespoons of water. Gently mix in the water and make sure not to overmix the dough. You can finish up the mixing by just gently pressing the dough together with your hands. This recipe makes enough crust for two pies. You can half the recipe if you only need one. Divide into two equal pieces, wrap each in plastic wrap, and chill until ready to use. Sprinkle flour over your work surface, and also sprinkle a little flour on both sides of the dough. Press it into a disc, and you can add a little flour to the rolling pin too. Try rolling the dough from the inside out. I'm using a standard nine inch pie plate, so you'll want to roll the dough a little bit bigger than the pie plate. 
I'm using a nice hardwood rolling pin by JK Adams and you can check the links below for some of the items I'm using today. Continue adding just a little flour here and there as you're rolling out the dough. You'll see here the dough is trying to stick a little bit on the bottom so you can just brush a little flour underneath to help. I'm using a standard 9 inch pie plate and I ended up rolling the dough to maybe around 14 inches across. This recipe is really easy to handle, but if it scares you to pick it up, you could just roll it around a rolling pin and transfer it that way, but I've always just picked it up and thrown it right into the pie plate. So to make a nice edge around the crust, you'll want to fold over the extra dough and tuck it under. And I use a thumb and a finger to just pinch a little design around the side. There's a lot of different ways that you can do this. You could even just use a fork, make a little decoration around the edge. Really, you can just get creative and, and try whatever is easiest for you. And now for the filling. This is enough filling for one pie. In a small bowl, add one half cup granulated sugar, one half cup packed brown sugar, one heaping tablespoon of all-purpose flour, one and a half teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice, and a half teaspoon salt. Blend together, once again using my favorite blending fork, and set aside. In a mixing bowl, add one can of pumpkin. I'm using a 15 ounce can of pumpkin. Make sure not to get the pumpkin pie filling, just the plain old pumpkin. Now add the sugar and spice mixture we just mixed up. Add two whole eggs and one egg yolk, lightly beaten. The extra egg yolk adds a silky texture to the filling. Blend together well using a whisk. And the last ingredient for the filling is a 12 ounce can of evaporated milk. Now you can switch to a spatula, scrape the sides of the bowl, and make sure everything is blended well before pouring into your unbaked pie shell. If you have a few bubbles on the top of the filling, gently tap the pie plate against the table a few times. If you still see bubbles, try swirling the pastry fork through the top of the filling, and that should help. Bake in a preheated 425 degree oven for about 15 minutes. Then reduce the temperature to 350 and bake for about an additional hour. Baking times can vary depending on your oven. Keep check on the browning of your crust. You may need to add foil around the edges to prevent over browning. You may already have pie crust shields on hand, but if not, they're really easy to make. Take three strips of foil, pinch and roll the edges together, creating a little seam. Press out the seam and continue with the next piece. You'll notice I'm placing the dull sides of the foil facing each other. When you put the shield around the pie, make sure the shiny side is on the inside and the dull is on the outside. Wrap around the edges of the pie plate and pinch to seal. You'll know the pie is done when the filling is puffed and a knife comes out clean when testing in the middle. Let the pie cool completely and then you're ready for the last step, the spiced whipped cream. To a chilled mixing bowl, add one and a half cups of heavy whipping cream. Beat until soft peaks form. I'm using a cordless KitchenAid hand mixer, and it's really handy. I love the fact that you don't have to plug it in, and you can use it anywhere in your kitchen. 
Add two tablespoons of instant white chocolate pudding mix, a half teaspoon vanilla, and a quarter teaspoon cinnamon. Beat on high speed until nice and thick. Add a big dollop of whipped cream to each slice and top with just a little sprinkle of pumpkin pie spice. And that's how you make the world's best pumpkin pie. For a printable recipe, check out my website at doublestopbakeshop.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.